Hello, my name is Richard Kent. I want to talk to you today about the supernatural human eye. We all take the human eye very much for granted. We're using two eyes all the time, and we have stereoscopic vision. Uh, that is three-dimensional vision all the time, which we take, take very much for granted. However, the human eye is a complete miracle. The evolutionists would love you to believe that it all happened by chance in the primordial slime. But I want to tell you that the human eye is unbelievably complicated. Unbelievably complicated. It's far, far uh, more intelligent, far more uh, intelligently designed than a, any sophisticated camera, including the Hubble Space Camera. Um, light is actually photons moving in a waveform, they're subatomic particles. And in order to uh, see, we have to have uh, uh, photoelectric cells, the rods and the cones, in the retina, the back of the eye, to actually process this, these photons and convert them into electronic images which travel up the nerves to the visual cortex. But let's start at the beginning. In order for the, um, in order for the uh, light, the visible spectrum, to enter the eye, the, the, um, the skin has to become transparent. I'm not quite sure how the evolutionists imagined that a particular part of the human body, uh, the skin became transparent. Uh, however, in just one tiny part of the human body, we have a cornea. It's not any old cornea, it's a very special cornea, which has its own oxygen supply and also has windscreen wipers, called your eyelids, and also has uh, windscreen washers, <laughs> which is uh, basically your, te your tears, which are produced by your lacrimal glands. The, the light then enters uh, your eye and uh, enters uh, into a lens, which is a lens very similar to the lens on your camera, except it's a different type of lens because it's a living lens, uh, which actually squashes and accommodates and relaxes um, so, that, so to focus the light on the back of the eye. How does it do this? With ciliary muscles, muscles around the lens, which contract and relax to allow the light to be accommodated onto the retina. Now, the, uh, the whole eye is kept at a particular pressure, otherwise it would collapse, with the aqueous and vitreous humors. The only a certain amount of light is admitted to your eye, and that's why you have a diaphragm. It's called, a, it's called your iris. If too much light is admitted to your eye, it would burn the, ret the, the rods and the cones of the retina. Now, as the light uh, impacts the rods and the cones at the back of your eye, the specialized nervous cells called rods and cones, there are literally thousands and thousands of chemical reactions going on to convert the um, photons, the energy of the photons, into electronic impulses, which travel up the optic nerve through the optic chiasma in your, in your skull to the visual cortex at the back of your brain. Now, your visual cortex is composed of neurons. Each neuron communicates with 10,000 other neurons, and each neuron um, receives all this electronic information and builds up in your, um, in your brain an, a three-dimensional image of, of whatever it is you're looking at. Now, it's not as simple as that because most of the time we are moving. I agree that right now you're probably sitting, but most of the time we are moving. For example, if you are traveling a car, moving at 30 miles an hour and looking at a traffic, uh, at a light on a, a, a traffic light, for example, as you come closer to the traffic light, the angle between you and the traffic light changes. But um, God has arranged for the muscles around the eye to focus both eyes simultaneously with parallel vision 
on the red and the green and the yellow of the traffic lights. The same would happen if you're travelling not just at 30 miles an hour but 100 miles an hour. It would actually be very difficult uh, for Revelation TV to photograph me in a studio travelling at 100 miles an hour. But that's what our human eyes do all the time. Now I come back to the point that the evolutionists want you to believe this all happened by chance. Now, evolution primarily comes from Charles Darwin. I'd like to read to you what Charles Darwin himself said about the human eye. This is what Charles Darwin said in his book, The Origin of the Species, on page 167. To suppose that the eye, with all its inimitable contrivances for adjusting the focus to different distances, for emitting different amounts of light, and for the correction of spherical and chromatic aberration could have be been formed by natural selection seems, I freely confess, absurd in the highest degree. Charles Darwin says that the development of the human eye by natural selection is absurd. That is the one statement that Charles, Charles Darwin made in his entire book that I agree with. The, it is absurd to think that the human eye developed by chance. The human eye is a miracle of engineering by a supremely intelligent God. Your human eye is amazing and is one of many, many, many examples of a super intelligent, super clever scientist who's called Jesus Christ. Thank you for listening and God bless you. Thank you.